Hi, it's time to have a look at another returned BM235. I've done like uh, return repair videos on these before and uh, this one uh, is, uh, was like way out of worry. It is uh, quite a few years old apparently, um, but somebody said they're, they're having a strange problem with it. So I said, hey, you know, like normally I'd just like uh, replace it um, and they like keep the old one. But I thought, hey, this is interesting enough. Please uh, send it back to me. So they shipped it back. Thank you very much. Haven't switched it on yet. Um, so yeah, it was like a couple of years out of warranty, but I said, oh, look, I'll ship you another one anyway. Um, uh, for those who don't know, the BM235 uh, is a pretty reliable uh, meter. I've, how long have I been selling it now? Like five plus years or something. Um, but it's not a zero uh, return rate on these things. It's not you know, it, it, it's not large, the number of failures, but uh, over the years there have been uh, quite a few failures of these things. It's, um, I'm not sure whether or not it's on par or more than, uh, say, the 121 uh, GW. Not entirely sure, but anyway, yeah, um, they're not uh, perfect, but it is an otherwise reliable meter, and you don't expect any manufacturer... Uh, of any meter to have like zero defects over time. They all have them. It's a, you know, it's a manufacturing bell curve thing. So, so anyway, let's switch this puppy on and have a look. I assume it still has batteries. And there we go. That's the fault. That's the fault. He actually sent me a video of this and I thought, wow, I've never seen that before. Look at this. It's jumping from zero to full scale. What the? <laughs> that is just weird. Now it doesn't doesn't do that on ohms. Does it do it on millivolts? Yep. Does it on millivolts range as well? Wow. That's just that is weird. How about milliamps? Yep. Yep. Okay. So that is very strange. So that's not like that's not an LCD problem. That's something to do with the processors going. I, I'm going to display full scale there. One five. One five. We're like what? Hmm, bizarre. So I, <laughs> I wouldn't even want to have a guess at what that fault is. Um, uh, please leave your guesses down below. Uh, before this video, I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to uh, fix it. It may not. Something strange might be going on with the custom uh, processor in this thing. Who knows? Or it may be some fault that's untraceable because I do not have a schematic for this. So I have to suck it and see. Ah, uh, the old initials on the back. Anyway, first thing to do, uh, well, take a fix, make sure it's not the batteries. Uh, make sure it's not those, but I don't think it is. So we'll whip this puppy apart, and uh, the first thing you want to do, of course, is to have a visual inspection, because we've had faults in this before, Energizer Advance. Look at that. Whip those out, give those a measure. Still looks like the original fuses. I use a good meter to measure it, 1.477. Well, 1.29, they've discharged unevenly, so I'm going to wax them, but that, that should be good enough, but who knows, the ESR, like, they may test fine open uh, circuit like this, but because the uh, input impedance of a digital meter is typically in the order of uh, 10 mega ohms, so that's NAF or load for this, so, uh, yeah, you really want to test these suckers under load, but I'll wax some brand newies in there, just to make sure it's not that, but, like, it. It's not that. <laughs> I guarantee it. Otherwise, everyone would have found this problem. Brand new batteries. Still doing it. Now, the ohms mode does work on here. But look, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to pick that up. But there's a weird... Yeah, you can see it on camera. There's a weird flickering on those digits, which you do not get on a regular BM235. There's a regular one. You just don't get that. So, yeah, something shifty going on. Something dodgy, brothers. All right, let's take a look under the Tagano microscope, shall we? And uh, have a squiz. So what we're looking for, first of all, uh, is any uh, blowing uh, components, because you never know. People never admit when they've, uh, you know, they might have, well, might have, they might not even know that they've blown it up or done anything uh, weird to it. So nothing doing there. There's no blowholes. Nothing fancy there, uh, yeah, one in uh, 4007 jobbies. Whole bunch of uh, tantalums there. You always got to suspect tantalums. But anyway, let's go because I don't think this is going to be like the input circuitry. I can't see how it can toggle like uh, full scale and zero based on the input uh, circuitry. So anyway, let's just have a look at uh, looking for any blown components, looking for any uh, potential solder joints. 
course, you have to get the light. It's all about the light at the right angle. The, the Tagano is not the best for this. My uh, Mantis scope, here it is. My Mantis scope is still the best thing, but the uh, unfortunately, the video on that sucks ass. Do not buy the video version of the Mantis. It's awful. But for uh, visual inspection, it cannot be beat. It's much better because it's got the stereoscopic uh, effect. It is much, much better. Uh, the light here is annoying. Yeah, it's all about getting the light at the right angle, but I can't see any major issues there. But crack solder joints, they're hard to find, for example. Um, but there's nothing to say that this is intermittent. This uh, controller up here, that's the uh, Hikon Tech, that's our LCD driver. So it's as, as I said, it's not going to be that. It's got nothing to do with the display. Got some E squared proms up here, nothing to do with that. So it's got something to do with our custom uh, processor, which is a, a Brian, BTC, Bryman Technology Corporation. They do design their own ASIC. They're very uh, hush hush about it. Whether or not it's designed in consultation with anyone else, I don't know. Little dag in there. Not sure what that is, but that's uh, it's nothing doing there. So once again, like I'm going to have to get this, give this a good thorough going over. Gee, silk screen missing there. Thorough going over under the Mantis because it's going to be better than this. But I'm just giving you a look on the Tagano. And uh, see, these are all your range resistors and other stuff in here because these are all your like your input range switching and stuff like that. So if you're going to suspect some sort of uh, component or a solder joint or something like that. There's a, a decent candidate area to do that. You always suspect tantalums. I mean, you know, if I get desperate, like you would start ripping out, uh, ripping out tantalums. But once again, I don't know how this could affect the uh, cause the issues that we're seeing here. Note like the star grounding there. I've got the traces running off there. It's all really nice. Same over here. Analog VSS, there it is, analog VSS 1. Uh, then there's digital VSS, so there's digital ground and analog ground, and then they've got everything just starring off from the analog ground there. So rather than, you know, flood fill this capacitor as ground, rather than just flood fill it down to uh, the power plane, of course, um, you want to stop any uh, currents mixing in from anywhere else, so you star it back to there. So that's really... Nicely laid out. I like that. Oh, etchant trap. There you go. Non 90 degrees in there. Oh, your old school etchant fanboys are going to be wagging their finger. Don't do that. <laughs> doesn't. These days, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter a rat's um, etchant traps. Or, oh, I'm not going to say they're a thing of the past, but uh, it's not something that you really need to. Worry yourself about unless you're on the bleeding edge. Process tech these days is pretty good. Oh, I don't see any components in there. Like the problem with this top board here is that uh, it's soldered on. <laughs> it does come out, but you've got to uh, you've got to unsolder it. But I should do that. It should be thorough. I'll be back. Heat that up there and pull that off. There you go. And where is it? The other one's over here. And I'll heat that up and pull that off to one side there. Bingo. Let's get that out. Yeah, as I said, I can't see how it can be anything to do with the input circuitry at all. There is another wire attached, but you can leave that off. Like, there's nothing. There's going to be nothing doing on there. Like, absolutely nothing. That's all your input protection. This is how this meter can get its um, Cat4 uh, 300 volt uh, rating up here. There you go. In such a, a compact little meter. It's fantastic. It's why I love it. It's why I love the BM235. Not only is it just a fast and feature packed, a reasonable price, but uh, it is really compact. So nothing doing around there. But as I said, like it's the same on all of the ranges. I like, ah, this is funny. I've never noticed that before. They tried to do the star ground in there, right? They tried to do star and they've shorted them all out there. 
<laughs> that's that's actually quite funny. I like that. All right. Now this is not the old design where we had problem with the inductors down here cracking. This is the new layout, I believe. But uh, yeah, it's not going to have anything to do with those. There is absolutely nothing, unless people are screaming at me, there's nothing visual on here at all. Don't see any joints. Don't, uh, no cracked solder joints. No dodgy solder joints from the factory that have just come a guts or over time. And no obvious blown components. So, but as I said, I'll have, an, have another go at it under the Mantis because that'll give me the 3D. I can like get here like this and then move my head side to side and look around like that. And you just, oh, the image quality is just absolutely, you know, it, it just blows even this like multi-thousand dollar Tagano out of the water. It's just the difference between a proper op stereo optical microscope and one of, even though I've got one of the best um, digital microscopes in the industry, it's fantastic um, as far as digital microscopes go. It's just, it's just not the same. So I'll get back to you. You're not going to believe it. Like literally the first or the second resistor that I looked at, I might have found something. Let's see if I can see it on the Tagano microscope. Focus, you bastard. There's a crack. Oh, it's cracking that one. Oh, no, that looks like, trust me, if you get that the right angle, there looks like there's a crack in that. No, on second look, under here and on the Mantis, it does look okay. So it was just a uh, trick of shadows and light. You can come a gutter on there thinking that you can see a crack, but no, give it a little poke. She ain't budging, so. I don't think it's a problem. And next thing you want to look at are the solder joints on the processor as well. And when in doubt, just reflow them all. In fact, I'm getting to that point. I've looked at all the other parts now, and I'm getting to the point where, yeah, I think like it's. I I just don't know because I don't have a schematic. I'm not going to go do A B comparisons with these because unfortunately, um, it's not easy to power this up. Um, at the same time as having access to probe it because of the battery uh, contacts, you're going to put the back case on. You can certainly do that. Like I can, you know, solder in wires and things like that to power it, and I've done that in the past, but it's uh, it's not fun. Anyway, I can't, no, I've looked at every component under the uh, Mantis, and I just can't see anything. Put some flux on the uh, processor here and give her a reflow, maybe? Uh, no, it's my imagination. I thought I saw a short between those pins. Anyway, I'll put some flux on there and I'll just uh, reflow those. Change it over to my well base tip so it'll self wick. So I've gone all the way around there, I've reflowed them all to power it back up. And it's not a bad, uh, you know, it's not the world's <laughs> best technique for. Uh, repair something like this but you know when it's a weird fault like this and it's just uh, toggling like the, the process is doing that it's toggling between positive and negative like I don't know I uh, like I maybe suspect one of the range resistors I still don't know the mechanism behind it maybe I could sit down with a typical processor and figure out maybe how it's uh, doing that going full scale and zero but anyway I'm just going to re Repower that and see what's what. Well, nope, that didn't help at all. But hey, because like it takes bugger all time to do that, uh, much quicker than what I was just doing there with commentary. Um, and no, it's uh, still doing the same business. Okay, so you can scratch uh, joy joints on the processor. Oh, and by the way, yes, I have checked. It does measure bang on. So if I feed like one volt or two volts in from my voltage uh, reference, it will show 2.000. It'll just toggle between two and five. So it's otherwise bang on. That means that the measurement, like the, or the input side, the measurement side, that's all working fine. But for some reason, it's toggling five like that that is just like and it's doing the digits it's not like you know the um lcd uh drivers doing something weird because it's displaying a number like it, it's literally turning off uh digits and switching them on so i i can't see how it's that 
the LCD driver because every uh, it's not like the LCD uh, driver you send it numbers and then it, it like it displays. Uh, I mean, like BCD, and then it displays the numbers. They're all individually segment addressable. So, I like I can't see how it could be that. It seems like the processor is actually the thing doing that, right? Because if it was LCD, right, it'd be like changing on there, right? So it's definitely a processor type thing. So I'm actually puzzled about this one. So I'll, I'll whack this video up on the second channel. I don't want to spend any more time on it at this stage. I might uh, see, I might hand it over to the audience um, if you've got any ideas about what this could possibly be. I mean, we could go, as I said, we could go into like a typical data sheet for a multimeter uh, chipset and things like that and try and figure out exactly what mechanism would be happen in there. I mean, it uses dual slope integrations, so it like, but I can't see how that would tie into, or multi-slope. Um, I don't see how that would tie into that, especially like, because it's reading bang on. But actually, um, technically it's not actually going to a full scale because this is not a 5,000 count meter. This is actually, it goes to about 6,500 uh, counts uh, before it will actually like uh, range over. So it's not even jumping to full scale, but it's jumping to five. Why? Why? So there you go. That is weird. Now, I was going to turn this one over to the audience to see if you have any ideas, and still, if you do, um, put it down below. But I decided, hey, I'll contact Bryman because they're incredibly responsive with um, uh, any issue uh, to do with their meters. Absolutely. Whoop. Insertion error. It doesn't like that. I haven't put the screws back on, so it's beeping at me. There we go. Whoops. Um, anyway, so I asked them because I thought, hey, what if this 5 is not a 5, but it's actually an S, and, the, and it was the actual programmed into the firmware that it's reporting some sort of, you know, built-in internal error, like S for software error or, you know, sampling error or, or some other thing like that. So I contacted them and say, hey, are there any internal, you know, codes like this? And they came back and they said, no, um, it's basically, they've done some in investigating this particular thing. I sent them the video and everything. And they said, um, no, it looks like something's wrong with the main processor in this thing. So that's it. Um, it's They recommended simply replace the main processor. So yeah, I'm not going to spend any more time on it. It looks like it's something gone wrong with the main processor. What that is, is it like some sort of, you know, a migration issue on the die? Something's failed like I did uh, that recent one with the Intel bug, for example. Is, is something gone wrong with the silicon? perhaps, and why it's doing the S, they have no idea either, um, or the, the 5, they have no idea either, but it otherwise works, it's bang on, so yeah, it's weird, um, I, like I could get another, salvage another meter and try and replace the processor and things like that, but then it'd have to be completely recalibrated, and I can't necessarily do that here, and it's like, it's not worth the hassle, it's just, something's gone wrong with the processor chip, there you go, so that's a, a weird fault, that's the first time I've ever heard that one. So there's been a few uh, different faults with this over the years, but that's really fascinating. Anyway, if you do have any other uh, thoughts, please leave it in the comments down below. Catch you next time.